Welcome back to Rustic Rebuild. Today I'm going to put this drive shaft on right here, this rusty one. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the last video on this thing, I said I'm going to have to probably get a drive shaft made or the one I had on it lengthened to be able to fit this thing since it was lifted. Well, when I bought this thing, this one here, this rustier drive shaft was in the bed and I figured it was just the same length as the one that was on it. But I lined them up, you can see they're pretty much in line here. And this thing's like a good three quarter inch longer than this one here. So, you can see. So what I'm hoping is I can replace the U-joints on this thing. When I bought the thing, there was a couple U-joints in the glove box. So I'm gonna try to fit those in here. This one, this one still turns and everything. If I, I can leave that one, I guess, if I have to. But this one is just frozen up solid. And it's probably going to be real fun to get those out. Can't really see it, but it's pretty rusty. We're going to try to get that figured out and see if this thing fits on there. And hopefully drive this thing around a little bit. The idle's kind of high. You can tell from last video. Um, try to get the idle turned down. Maybe get it running a little bit better. And then cruise around outside maybe a little bit. It's uh, just snowed a bunch a couple days ago, and it's kind of melting off now, so it's real slushy. But uh, it's like I'm wearing a Carhartt, but it's not even, I think it's probably like 40 some degrees. But so we're going to get this thing fixed up, see if we can get this new drive shaft put in, or new drive shaft, and see if we can get this thing cruising around. Here's these U joints I found in the glove box. So uh, Moog. 232, 232. I can't tell on this one. Yeah, I think it, it's a either a 230 or a 280 is what that looks like on that one. But I can't really see on that one. They all look the same. But I guess I'm gonna just try to use both of these to replace the U joints on that that drive shaft. But the other reason I wanted to replace this drive shaft, as you can see on this old one, since it was shorter. Those teeth are starting to break off there. That's blinds. I don't know how well you can see that. You can just see it's kind of rounded off. This one looks pretty good. So that's kind of the reason I'm doing all this. I also had these uh, these clips, all these clips and everything. I got everything soaked down with WD-40. So it's not the best penetrating oil, I know that. I should have had PB Blaster, but hopefully these things will come off. Uh, probably gonna have to use a little bit of heat on them and then get those things out, but we'll see. <clears throat> yep, just as I figured these things are stuck in there, so. Uh, let's see, try to get some heat on them or well, I might try a hammer and a punch first so I can get these up out of there. Well, I got this side out. This side just broke off. Can't really see that. but So there's most of it still in there. Just the tabs to squeeze it together broke off. So I guess I'm just going to shove the whole thing out this way. And obviously this will come out. And then this will have to kind of hinge out of there. But... So I guess I'm gonna start heating this and pounding and see if we can get this thing out. I don't have a puller for this thing either. I know it's some kind of make a puller that shoves on this and then the bolt runs in here and it kind of hooks around this. I'm not, I've used them before, but I don't have one. So we're gonna do without it. Man, that thing is really in there. Russian salt. All right, I'm going to go get the torch. By the looks of this, 
Man, it looks like it's not bad on camera, but there's rust packed all the way in there. It looks, it's gonna be hard to get out. So I'm just gonna just cut the whole thing. Cut here and cut here, and then just pound these in from the sides. All right. Now that that's out of there, I can just pound these things straight through, hopefully. Probably still gonna have to heat it up, though. Oh, I think I moved a little bit, actually. Hey, it's moving. One down. Oh, yeah. Bearing all over the floor. There we go. Oh, that clip even came out there, so uh, sweet. And those things are full of rust. I'm gonna try to take a pick and clean those out a little bit before I put those new clips in or they won't seat right. Oh, that's a fun sound. All right, that should be enough for those clips to seat in there, all right. I'm gonna clean these out with a little sandpaper. Nice and clean. Not really, but it'll work. Let's see if we can get these new ones in. Got some STP here. This stuff's really good for sliding stuff together, especially metal. It's really tight, tall inches, so hopefully that'll help us out. Put it up like that. Sticky. Put that all coated up. I'm gonna do the right thing and just tap this thing in with a hammer. Put this up in here so the bearings don't fly everywhere. Nice and seated. Get this other guy lubed up. Press them in with this thing. Oh, it's not far enough. Oh, I might get it. Oh, I gotta tap it a little bit more. Wow, they're actually going in really good. There we go. 
press them in as far as I can and then I'll have to tap them the rest of the way. There you go. There. Hey, that one's in like all the way. That's as far as that one needs to go. Let's see that. But that one's in good. This one needs to go in farther and it'll push everything together. Look at that. Here's everything is seated. Flip the servant to the other one. Oh yeah. Pretty stiff. That's how they normally are. No, not really, but it'll be fine. It's like the one you like pump in with a mini. Yeah, I see that, but I've never actually done one of these. Figure it's pretty straightforward. All right, there we go. Put the grease circ in. Everything's put together. I'm gonna do this thing and start doing this one. You know what, I think I'm just gonna leave this one. This one spins pretty good. There's no slop in it. Probably could be greased. But there's no, no place to grease it, so. But yeah, I'm just gonna leave that one. If it goes out, we got another one to replace it, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna slide this thing in there. Hopefully, all goes well. I started thinking this right here, somewhere in here, to where that seal is gonna ride, and this is a pretty. It's not pitted or anything, hardly, but I'm gonna clean this up with a wire brush and hopefully make that seal last a little longer. All right, got all that cleaned up. Nice and smooth, so it better, should seal better and it won't tear up that seal as much, hopefully. Probably already tore up, but. Put a, some of that STP on there too. I sprayed that with WD-40, so that should be fine when it goes together, be nice and lubed up. I didn't check the splines, so hopefully this fits. some persuasion. Those splines are pretty rusty so that's probably what's holding this up here. Well, I'll see y'all when I get this thing in. Alright. 
So I got this thing in there enough, I think. I pulled it back out and all the I looked at all the splines, they look good. There's just a bunch of rust and build up inside that new drive shaft and it's trying to push a lot through. So I got it pushed forward enough that I can get the U-joint together, but I tapped on it enough and I know it's not supposed to hammer on these things, especially right where the caps go, but I did. Uh, it's a free drive shaft, it came with the truck. So if it works, it works. But in all that tapping, one of the new U-joint caps fell out and the needles went everywhere. And I gotta try to get that back together. All right, there you have it. That's how you put a drive shaft together the right way. All right, so this thing's pretty much ready to go. I got this drive shaft on. Got the floor cleaned up here. And see if we can get this thing running and do some light tuning on the carb. Maybe get it to idle down a little lower and not be screaming. stock already. No way back here. I think there's a front shaft out that's all worn out and needs replaced anyways.
don't think a fuel gauge does. But. got this thing driving so. next video on this thing hopefully we can assess this front grill i got a grill ordered i got the lights uh had to order two two lights and two of them already work so we're gonna get that all put together and then front end will look a lot better If you realize whenever to get that thing tuned down, I didn't want to tune it down too far and then the thing wouldn't stay running on its own. And or idled down is what I meant, but didn't want to idle it down too far. And then just having to keep restarting it, but took it around the block and it I had to restart it a couple times because it would keep dying out when I'd have to stop or put it uh, either a turn or a stop or come accelerate again, it would just die out. It's not running that good. So anyways. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, then uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.